Amen. We praise the Lord for bringing us to Delta stage at this time. As um, our leader has said, I started coming to Delta and this part of Nigeria since, actually since 1972, even before Deeper Life began. I will wait to quite a lot of places and I've told the story of Delta, my experience in Delta, without mentioning Delta. Now, we are here in Delta. <laughs> we went around, we're going from place to place. And Sister B, that he mentioned, that's actually Sister Beatrice, we were evangelizing. And there we go to a village. And there's a woman, I've told the story over and over, but this is Delta. She was going around a particular part upside down. And Sister B said, let's evangelize and let's tell her. I said, tell her. I said no, don't be in a hurry. She finished, we watched her. And uh, when she finished, I said, Madam, what are you doing? I said, if I didn't know. Oh, he said, I'm worshiping my God. I said, your God? I said, look at your boy here. The boy was paralyzed. They are watching the mother going around the empty porch because the gods of this world are empty gods. <laughs> so I said, see what your God has done to your child. I'll introduce the true God unto you. A Lord, a Savior, King of kings, and Lord of lords. And if you believe in him, he'll heal your child. He said, no, no. Pray for my child, then if the child gets well, I'll throw away the God. I said, no, I'm a teacher. I tell my students what to do. My students don't tell me what to do. <laughs> After we discuss here and there, so the woman took the porch, nothing under, totally. Stood there, and I didn't even need an interpreter. I said, in the name of Jesus, boy, get up. Understand? The boy did not understand the English. I did not understand his language. And I spoke in a language he didn't understand. I wasn't talking to the boy. I was talking to God who understands our language. <laughs> and when I said, get up, the boy looked at me like this, and he got up. <laughs> and then we evangelized and told the woman about Christ. And she believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, I about your husband. He, she said, he went to the farm. I said, oh, wait. And after your know, while waiting, we were discipling her, telling her things about Christ. And eventually, the man came. I said, are you the father of this boy? He said, yes. I said, see what Jesus has done for your child. And that now, your wife born again, your child knowing Christ. I said, now you understand, we're talking about long, long ago. I had not studied uh, communication at that time. And the only thing I could say is that you are the black leg, the goat in the whole family. He said, no, no, I will not be a goat. I said, if you're not going to be a goat, kneel down. And then we prayed and came, he came to the Lord. And Christ was established in that home. And uh, since that time... I may go in here and there all over Nigeria, all over Africa, and the rest of the world, and the anointing has followed everywhere. Yeah. And today, what we have come to do is to pass that anointing over to you. Yeah. Keep up that hand, Father, in Jesus' name. Yeah. I pray, Lord, that today you visit your people. I pray the word will come to every heart, turn every life around, and I pray anointing, abiding anointing, increasing anointing, powerful, mighty signs and wonders 
walking anointing come upon everyone today in Jesus name Amen. open our ears open our hearts open our mind open our whole system to what you have for every one of us today in Jesus name Amen. thank you father because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray Amen. Thank you very, thank you very much. You can see down today. I'm um, uh, bringing something foundational. We're going to build up. We're going to go from the foundation, and then we go to a higher level, higher level. By the time we finish on Thursday, you will have, you will have become a transformed minister, professional in Jesus' name. Today, I'm talking about abiding anointing for bible believing ministers abiding anointing for bible believing ministers anointing is like the fuel you put in the car look at the car bmw and it's very new and the manufacturers have told all that this bmw if you take care of it very well before he has any overhaul it will run about three hundred thousand miles and so you have it but if you put the right foil there and you do the cleaning the filters everything then the manufacturers will be proved right it will keep on running and running and running but if you put um, inferior foil there that doesn't really have the quality that will run that bmw it will not run as the manufacturer told you it will run is it their fault are they are they wrong in their mechanical system everything they said the bmw will do were they wrong no they were not wrong but you didn't have the right foil inside that's right foil in christian terminology and for the ministry is the anointing when you put the anointing when the anointing is there and god puts the anointing on you then you will run you will not faint you will walk you'll not be weary and everywhere you go that anointing will keep on walking abiding anointing for bible believing minister the anointing will have the one that works and the one that comes through jesus christ comes upon people who believe the bible accept the bible they live by the bible they pray by the bible any anointing outside the bible is a wrong anointing you don't stand on the word of god you leave god you leave christ you leave the bible and you leave the revelation of the bible and then you run for anointing somewhere anywhere you get such anointing outside the bible contrary to the bible not founded on the bible that anointing is from darkness powers of darkness and that anointing will not do the work of god as it ought to be done you have to decide what work am i doing am i doing the work of god okay if i'm doing the word of work of god is giving us the bible is giving us his word and it says from that word read that word believe that word apply that word obey that word preach that word and the anointing will confirm the word he has given us in jesus name and then ministers the word ministers means that when we say you minister you give out something you give out the bread of life you give out the word of God. You give out what the people need that heaven has provided for them. If you say you're a minister and you're sitting down and you never minister and you never do anything and you never touch people's lives, you never touch families, you never touch anyone or transform anyone, it's like a driver who has not driven a car for the last five years. I have license. I'm a driver. Do you drive? Not now. <laughs> you are not a driver then. A swimmer. 
that never swims, a runner that never runs, a minister must minister. And you must have what you are ministering to the people. You know what you minister. You know the people. You know their need. And then you link the people and their need with what they need. And I believe from today, a new ministry. A higher ministry. And we're talking about, as I've said, abiding, anointing for Bible believing ministers. We're looking in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23. It said to you, at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known unto you my words. Two things, the spirit and the scriptures. Two things, the Holy Ghost and the Word. And they go together. The Holy Ghost will not walk without the Word. The Word will not bear fruit without the Holy Ghost. The anointing comes upon the Word. And it is that Word that has the anointing. And it comes like arrow into the hearts of people that makes the change. I see chapter 59. I'm reading from verse 21. It's still talking about the Spirit and the Scripture, the Spirit and the Word. It says, as for me, this is my uh, covenant with them, says the Lord. It says, my Spirit, look at that, that's really goes, my Spirit that is upon thee. And my words that I have put in thine mouth, in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth and the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed. Then it says, says the Lord from henceforth and forever. It's telling us the word and the spirit. The scripture and the spirit. And there are people that say, I need the spirit, I need the spirit. And they run and run and pray and fast and get to the mountain, get to the valley. What are you looking for? The spirit. Did you bring your Bible what you know? The spirit. Do you read the Bible? No. The spirit. Do you believe the word and the prophecy and the promises and the pro proclamation of the Bible? No. The spirit. No, it doesn't work like that. The spirit works for the scripture. And the scripture is affirmed and confirmed by the spirit. And so we have the two. And that's what the Lord is saying. My spirit that support you and my words that I put in your mouth shall not Depart. I uh, will look at First John chapter two, verse twenty-seven. In First John chapter two, verse twenty-seven, it tells us, "But the anointing which ye have, which ye have received of Him, abides in you." The, the anointing that the Holy Ghost, the anointing which you have received of Him. There are places where, you know, people go and maybe they lay hands on them or maybe they lie on the floor, maybe they, whatever they do, but it's not of him. You are the man who is uh, transferring the anointing. Can you tell me about being born again? No, 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 born again. This one is not evangelical circle. This one is spirit, spirit, spirit. And then you ask them, what transformation has Christ made? in your life you say that you are a believer you are distributing all this anointing can you tell me the day and the time and the how you became a real child of god following after the lord no they cannot tell can you tell me of the change if any man be in christ it's a new creature all things have passed away and behold all things have become you know they cannot tell because they still live like they used to live and they cannot tell the day the hour the time when the gospel came to them and when they received that born again experience if they say they are born again when were you born again i got born again 19 such and such how many years now 37 years after the 37 years tell me what improvement have you made 
Have you grown in the Lord? No, they're falling and rising, falling and rising every year. The same adultery comes up again. The same fornication comes up again. And they don't understand that we're saved. There is, uh, you know, Jesus prayed, sanctify them through thy truth. That's the word again. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And it says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Ah, pastor, that word holiness, that one, I don't know. How will you see the Lord? Then, if you do not have that experience that takes us to heaven, God is holy. Christ is holy. The Holy Spirit is holy. And heaven is holy. The angels are holy. And the streets of Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, everything up there, holy. And there you are. You know not even the first alphabet of holiness. How are you going to be there? We must grow in the Lord. So, the anointing we're talking about is not an isolated anointing. The anointing we're talking about is not an anointing just to shake or anointing just to heal the sick. Why? Because Jesus said on that final day, many will say unto me, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name anointing? Have we not done many wonderful works in your name anointing? And in your name we've cast out devils. That's anointing, you know, but if that anointing is isolated, the Lord said, I will say unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Anointing without transformation of life will not get us anywhere. Anointing without a change, without making us new creatures in Christ, will not get us anywhere. Anointing, casting out devils, healing the sick, prophesying without having the heart that is purged, the heart that is purified, the heart that is sanctified, and we have that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord Lord, anointing separated from holiness, anointing separated from a clean life, anointing separated from a life that makes impact around us that people can say, he has been with Christ, she has been with Christ. I pray you will not be holding on to isolated anointing, Amen. but abiding anointing for Bible believing minister. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, Bible. Basic instruction before leaving earth. Bible. Uh, Bible. As you look at the Bible, what we have in the Bible is B-I-B-L-E. Basic instruction before leaving earth. And anybody that leaves this earth without having the basic and the basic instruction, instruction basic about the new birth, instruction basic about a new life, instruction basic about eternal life, instruction basic about how to live to the glory of God. To let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, not your bad works, not your lying, not your evil, not the old nature, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's what the Bible is all about. Basic instruction before living at number two, Bible. Blessed is inspired book lifting everyone that, that's the bible and that's the constitution of the kingdom of god that's what we have to go take to the people we're bringing to them blessed inspired book lifting everyone this is the book that leaves the sinner to become a saint it is the book that lifts up the weak to become strong it is the book that lifts us up from where we were in the past to where we ought to be now and where we ought to be in the future the bible blessed inspired book lifting up everyone number three in the bible boundless instructor 
bestowing limitless experiences. When you get into the Bible, when you bury yourself in the Bible, when you read that Bible, when you swallow the Bible, when you see the promises there, the proclamations there, when you see the precepts there, when you see the prophecies there, it lifts you up. It bestows upon you limited experiences. Experience of salvation, that's number one, that's not all. Experience of sanctification, that's number two, it's not all. Experience of being filled and baptized and immersed in the Holy Ghost, that everything within you runs like it ought to run. The experiences we ought to have, and it doesn't finish because God is unlimited. The experiences we can have from the Lord is also unlimited, and we get that from the Bible, B I B L E boundless instructor bestowing uh, limitless experiences so we're coming to number one number one is the bible basic instruction before leaving us in john chapter 5 uh, reading from verse uh, verse 39 john chapter 5 uh, we're reading from verse uh, 29 it says in verse 29 such the scriptures for in them you think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And they are they which testify of me. We search that scripture, we read that scripture, and we understand that scripture. We search it. We study it, we know it, so that it will bring life eternal unto us. It tells us in Luke chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 22. Verse 22 says, And uh, it came uh, to pass that the beggar died and was uh, carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. How will you know there is Abraham's bosom? How will you know there is paradise? How would you know there is heaven without the Bible revealing that to you? All you'll be thinking of is guesswork. You'll be thinking that if a man dies, he dies like an animal. He doesn't go anywhere. And so whatever you can make of whatever you have on this earth, that's all you have. It's the Bible that gives us the basic instruction that this sadly life is not all that this sadly life when we finish here we go to the other side and we're told about this beggar he went to abraham's bosom the rich man also died and he was buried look at verse 23 in verse 23 he tells us and in hell he lit up his eyes how would you know that life will be better for the beggar who believes in the Lord here when he gets to the other side and life will be terrible the torture the torment will be terrible for the rich man he had all things here he had money he had knowledge he had contacts he had everything but he did not have Christ how would you know the end of such a man is the Bible basic instruction before leaving earth that tells us that on the other side that the uh, man when he died in hell he lit up his eyes being in torments torments in the plural torments torment torment because every day and every year for a hundred years for a thousand years and when he's trying to get used to this kind of torment another level of torment comes a hundred years a thousand a million years he goes on and on how would i know that if I didn't have this basic instruction before leaving out that tells me, get this done before you leave. Because if you don't do this before you leave the earth, it will be terrible over there. And then we're told that he saw Lazarus afar off. Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham in verse 24. In verse 24, it tells us, and she, he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. What? Rich man? How would I know that rich man will pray over there? But a useless prayer, unanswerable prayer. Because he doesn't, even the prayer, did he know about Jesus? Abraham, have mercy on me. He knows names, sir. 
He didn't know that. He didn't have the basic instruction before leaving that. Even as they attempted to pray over there, he wasn't praying that he said, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this place. In verse 25, in verse 25, but Abraham said, Son, remember, when we get to the other side, how would I know when somebody he dies as I you know try to talk to him here he's not hearing I beat him I beat him he's not responding I shake him he cannot respond because he's dead if I didn't have the Bible how would I know that when they get to the other side they will talk then when they get to the other side they will see when they get to the other side they will feel that the spirit body that gets to the other side will see and hear. How would I know that without the Bible? Is the basic instruction before leaving earth? And so the man now began to say that uh, Abraham will send Lazarus, that she will dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm tormented in this film. And Abraham said, Remember that thou in thy lifetime would you, would you understand? I wouldn't have known this basic instruction before leaving there that when we get to the other side we will remember every opportunity we had to get saved or we'll remember every message we had you could have been sick we will we'll remember all the contacts that god brought us into and the conferences we held and the things we had we would remember and so abraham said remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things a hundred years good things one thousand years torment a million years torment let's compare let's think about it what do you have on earth what do you have in this world how many books have you read in this world books about business books about entrepreneurs something and books about economy and books about politics and books about science all the books we have read if you put everything together the volume the chapters the paragraphs is greater bigger than the bible but the one book that prepares us for million years of existence and for a trillion years of existence on the other side we hardly read those books the ones that all the knowledge we get in them will terminate and finish here at this time that's what you concentrate on but now the man who had not read that who had not read the word Abraham said you are not tormented and Lazarus had evil things and now he is comforted and thou art tormented verse 26 and verse 26 it says and besides all this between us and you there is a great goal fixed so that they which would pass from this from hence to you cannot and neither can they pass to us that would come from this how would i know there's no second chance how would i know that when we say god is a god of mercy compassion and love that that is true for us as we're still on earth before we leave the hour i know that without the bible basic instruction before leaving earth and now on the other side there's no second chance verse 27 verse 27 then says then he said i pray thee therefore rather that thou wouldest send him to my father's house verse 28 in verse 28 it says for i have five brethren that he may testify unto them lest they also come into this place of torment don't they have the bible the basic instruction that you will not do for them 
They must have somebody rising up from the dead. Look at the answer of Abraham in verse 29. Verse 29, it says, and Abraham says unto him, they have Moses. What he means is they have the writings of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They have Moses and the prophet. They have all those books from, uh, from Genesis to Malachi. Let them hear them. Let them read their words. Hear their words, believe their words, act on their words. Bastachi in Bastachi, and uh, he said, Nay, <laughs> look at the man in hell is still arguing because he thought he was still here. Because here, when the prophet speaks to the rich man, he says, Nay. Economy does not say that. When we speak to the people, the people of the world, they, what they say here is, nay, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Preacher, nay, I have money. I have contacts. I have this, I have that. The same idea that he had when he was on earth, nay, Abraham speaks, nay, Moses speaks, nay, and Isaiah speaks, nay, and even Christ speaks in his word. He says, nay, and he go on saying, nay, 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 how to be born again, nay, how to be sanctified, nay, the importance and the indispensability of holiness of earth, nay. Nay, rather, Abraham, father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Verse 31, in verse 31, and he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead it tells us clearly that this bible that's what we need to read and ourselves first get saved and then after we're saved we can quote the same verses and the same word that saved us and give to them so that others through you through me through us together will be saved in jesus name need a better amen. amen point number one the bible basic instruction before leaving and 30 things quickly we're going to look at there number one is still the bible blessed illumination breaking lifelong evil the bible when you read the Bible, this is the blessed illumination, and it breaks lifelong evil. Number two, the Bible still believes information, bringing life eternal. You believe that information, you believe what you read, that's the Bible, and then it brings to you life eternal. The Bible, number three, believers' inheritance beyond life's essentials life's essentials the things we need for the body the food the water the light the fire and everything we need on earth there is this the bible now is the believer's inheritance that goes beyond the essentials of life look at number one number one is a blessed illumination breaking life long evil that's what the bible does for us in matthew chapter 6 reading from verse 13 it tells us how to pray it says lead us not into evil lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil uh, that, that's what the bible tells us to pray because the bible essentially is giving to us as the blessed illumination that lightens up our heart breaking lifelong evil what kind of prayer do we pray very different from this we have not learned from the bible the basic thing to pray for that for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and the whole church said 
Amen. Look at First Thessalonians chapter 5. We're reading from verse 22. It says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. And it's the Bible that shows us that way. It's the one that illuminates our heart, our personality. And it says that is evil. The world does not count that evil. They say, uh, you know, we just adjust the pleasures of the flesh. The world doesn't count that evil. They say that is uh, the remuneration, what you get, although it's not given to you where you are working. They say that is no evil. They say this one is not corruption that's what everybody does but it's the bible that tells you what is evil that corruption is evil that licentiousness is evil that the works of the flesh that they are evil and it says abstain from all appearance of evil and as you go through the word of god the bible it gives you blessed illumination breaking lifelong evil come to number two here number two here is still the bible is the believed information you know if i give you information and you don't believe it it doesn't work if there is a, you know a lion coming the lion just went astray and it's not on the street and i say lion 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 if you don't believe that information you're not going to do anything about it if i say the smallest drop of sin will land you in hell if you don't repent if you don't believe that you'll not take action because you don't believe it's not what we read in the bible it's what we believe in the bible that gets us out of danger out of eternal torment if the believed information that brings life eternal in a john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world if i don't believe that god loves me you know i've been a great sinner a terrible sinner a dirty sinner a private sinner a public sinner and i feel that i've done so much i've gone so far that there's no way nobody can love me god cannot love me so if i'm going to perish if i'm going to go to hell let me do more so that i know what i'll be suffering for because i didn't believe the information that the bible has given me that brings life eternal unto me that god so loved the world that he gave the only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life when i believe what do i have I said when I believe, what do I have? Everlasting life. You know, if people don't believe the information that brings life eternal, they're having doubts. I receive Jesus as my Savior, and I'm still thinking, can I get to heaven when I die? I believed on the Lord. I've thrown away my idols. I've thrown away the Lord's over me. And I, don't make, I now make Jesus my only Lord and Savior. And my eternity depends on Him. Pastor, can I still get saved i said why don't you go back to the bible and believe the information that brings life eternal uh, let's come to number three here number three is the believers inheritance beyond life's essentials beyond life's essentials you know our young people they think that life's essential is gold and silver it's money pounds and dollars they think life's essential is uh, you know this and that and because they think that's the essential thing that's what they're running after they leave school they run after what they call life's essentials even we adults will think that life's essential is you know, if i build a house there i build another house there if i go overseas if i have this and have that we think that is life's essential how can somebody be in this life and not have this and not have that and 
that we forget there's an inheritance beyond life's essential. There's something greater, there's something higher, there's something more important than all the gold and all the silver and all the money and the postulin and the dollars. The Bible reveals to us believers' inheritance beyond life's essentials. That's what Jesus said, what shall it profit in man if he gains the whole world? And he loses his soul because he never sees there's anything, no inheritance to him is beyond life's essential. And they run and they run and they run until they break their bones, until they lose their lives. They run after those things on earth until they perish. But in the word that makes us to understand that there is something the greater than all the inheritance and everything you can have on the earth in Acts chapter 26 and reading from verse 18 it says to open their eyes our eyes need to be open and in the word of God the Bible that opens our eyes to that kind of inheritance and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God uh, there are people that they, they go to church they hold a Bible in their hand there's a Bible on their you know desk in the you know in the house maybe also in the office and their Bible also on their cell phone yet because they do not understand the believers inheritance that only comes from heaven they still go to Satan they still go to idol worship they still go to have the things they might have only from the powers of darkness they are baptized in water as infants they are confirmed in their denomination and they answer Christian names but their eyes have not been opened to turn from the power of Satan unto God is when you become serious with life you become serious with what is beyond the earth and you are thinking about the believers inheritance beyond life's essentials that your eyes are open and now you are turned from Satan and you are turned to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance look at that inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me we're coming to point number two now point number two we're looking at the bible what's the bible the bible is the blessed inspired book lifting up everyone all the other books all the books we have i have read quite a number of books in mathematics they are not inspired by the Spirit of God. You read the preface, you read the introduction of any book, and they will not tell you if it's not, you know, related to the Bible. They will not say this one is given by inspiration of God. And it's good for every generation. And it's good for every part of humanity. No. Those ones are not inspired. Yes, we'll read them because we need to know if you're going to, if you do geology, you want to know what's in the rock and how old is the rock and you want to know whether there's all inside the earth there. That one, we have to read those books on geology, on science, on arts, on history. We have to read books on governance. If we're going to govern, yet there's a book greater than all books. There's a book higher than all books. And this book is inspired. It's called the Bible. Blessed inspired book. Leading everyone. Look at Second uh, Timothy chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 16. All scripture, all scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, all scripture, the one historical, the one prophetic, all scriptures, the one poetic, and the one prophetic. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof and for correction and for instruction in 
in righteousness, for instruction in righteousness. If we read the book aright, it shows us our unrighteousness and it leads us to the righteous one, the Redeemer, who operates in our heart, who operates in our lives and brings righteousness to bear upon our lives. In verse 17, it says in verse 17 that the man of God, the child of God, the woman of God may be perfect, may be matured, may be complete, may be recreated, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's why we're told in Isaiah chapter 34, reading from verse 16, Isaiah 34 verse 16, seek ye out the book of the Lord. That's the Bible. Seek it out. Find it out. Get a copy for yourself. It says, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Don't just have it there and read and read because we need illumination, we need instruction, and we need inspiration from that book. So get it out and read. And then it says, uh, for uh, it says it there, no one of these shall fail. The proclamations of the Bible will not fail. The prophecies will not fail. And the power in that book that comes from the book comes into our heart. It will not fail in Jesus' name. It says, they shall not, neither shall they want, none shall want the other. That means will not lack her mate. The prophecy and the promise and the proclamation and the prediction and the precepts, everything, they'll join together to do what they ought to do in our lives. And then it says, for my mouth it hath commanded, and in spirit it has gathered them has gathered them. You see, as uh, Genesis, Exodus, and Joshua, Judges, and Ruth, and 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, they didn't leave the writers. They didn't leave uh, in the same city, in the same age, the same period. They lived at several periods and ages, and you come to the New Testament, Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, and, and then you have Paul the Apostle. Then you have Revelation. The Lord gathered those things all together and they form a complete unit, and there's no contradiction at all, because it says whether it was uh, many years ago at the time of Moses, at the time of Joshua, many years ago at the time of uh, David, what the son or now at the time of Paul the same spirit Holy Spirit that doesn't change Holy Spirit that doesn't have inferior knowledge and uh, important uh, you know um, better knowledge the spirit of God gathered them together so you have uh, the unity of the whole Bible and it says seek it out have a copy in your hand and read and apply and believe and follow through because that is the blessed inspired book that lifts up your life. Three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the Bible begetting incorruptible book like breaching eternally. The Bible number two is the broad incomparable book lightning effectively number three is the bible is the bold inclusive book leading empowering that, that's the word and because we need all this in our lives before we leave the world here that's why we take that book we read that book we love that book we obey the words we read inside that book. Look, look at number one number one is begetting incorruptible book like breaching eternally when we actually get into the bible even if it's one verse of scripture that you read there's enough life there there's enough power 
out there. That's what it's there. It gives you enough grace that it liberates you. It liberates you now and liberates you eternally. It tells us in First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 23, it says, being born again. That's it, born again. Whether we are as old as Peter or we are as young as Timothy, born again. Whether we are a woman like Mary or a man like Zacchaeus man woman born again it's for everyone it's for the young it's for the old it's the spirit it's the inner man it's our heart that needs to be regenerated that needs to be born again that needs to be born afresh that needs to be born anew born from above and it says being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. 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 That's why the word is always fresh. Our forefathers who knew the Lord, they read the Bible. The great prophets of old and the great reformers of old, they read the Bible. And now we have the same Bible and it's as fresh to us as to them. Because it's the word, the word of God, the mind of God, the revelation of God that lives and abides forevermore it tells us in um, ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 26 ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that's what the watch does uh, you know I, when i was a teacher I had uh, the group of uh, young people that, uh, you know, I was teaching the word of God. I, I asked, um, you know, one boy one day, I said, have you read your Bible today? Yes, sir, I read the Bible. I said, where did you read? And he said, John chapter 23. I said, you didn't read the Bible. Yes, I did. Yes, I, I said, okay, open to me, John chapter 23. And John did not get up to chapter 23. And so I know, he did it read the Bible. I'm asking you then, have you read the Bible today? Yes, I've read the Bible. What did you read? James chapter 7. Uh -huh. You see, we need to really read the Bible or read the Bible. And it says when we read that Bible, it says that it might sanctify and cleanse us with the washing of water by the word. If we truly read the Bible, it sees us, it washes us, it purges us, it purifies us, it sanctifies us. And anything unclean, anything unrighteous, the word that we read, the word that we believe, watches of everything that ought not to be there verse 27 in verse 27 that he might present he to himself it says a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish will come to number two here number two here is broad incomparable book lightning effectively the bible is broad it speaks to children it speaks to adults it speaks to aged people those who are almost on their way to the other side and to cross over it has message for everyone it speaks to men it speaks to women it speaks to the black it speaks to the white it speaks to every tribe on earth it's broad and parable. You cannot compare it with any other book on earth. Bible, B I B L E. Broad, incomparable book, lightning effectively. That's what God said. I say, chapter 55. I'm reading here from verse 8. I say, chapter 55, verse 8 for my thoughts are not your thoughts. All the books will read. They are the thoughts of men. Men, high, men, 
low. Men educated, men thoughtless. Every kind of man. The books were read or produced by them. But God says, the thoughts in my book, they are not like the thoughts in the books of men. They are incomparable because it lightens us effectively. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says, says the Lord. Verse 9, in verse 9, it says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, and so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Then in verse 10, he tells us in verse 10, For as the rain cometh down, and uh, the snow from heaven, and it says, Returneth not to night, for uh, not thither. It says, But it watereth the earth, and maketh it to bring forth, it says, and, sh and, and birds, that it may bring seed, give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. It says in verse 11, it says, so, uh, my, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. The word that goeth forth out of my mouth. The word that goeth forth out of my mouth. Everyone that handles the Bible ought to be very, very careful. Because God himself says, it's not the word of Moses. It came out of my mouth. It came to him as my mouthpiece loudspeaker but it's not the word of moses we should be careful what comments what pass it's not the word of paul i hear some people saying ah, moses made a mistake in saying that he shouldn't have said that be very careful paul made a mistake in saying that he shouldn't have said that be very careful they're even getting to the place now to say Christ said this, but I say they are claiming greater authority than Christ. Be very careful in the word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. It says, and so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the word will accomplish in your life that which i that which i please and it shall prosper in the thing in the which i have said it look at psalm 119 i'm reading reading from verse 105 in psalm 119 verse 105 thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path verse 130 130 it says the entrance of thy words giveth light it giveth understanding unto the simple and uh, we're now coming to number three here number three is the bold inclusive book leading and empowering the bold, inclusive book. This book includes everything. Rebuke is there. Correction is there. Chastisement for doing evil is there. Judgment on the people that... And nobody sees them. Nobody knows them. Nobody can do anything. This book includes 
everything. It includes our repentance if we're coming out of the evil we have done. It includes our regeneration that transforms our lives after we have repented. It includes righteousness, the way we now live a straightforward life, an upright life. If we want to see God on the final day, it includes the peremptory declaration. It's appointed unto men who wants to die, and after this judgment, it includes everything. Then it, it includes the great beyond. It's an inclusive book that leads us in a powerful, mighty way. In Joshua chapter 1, it says in verse 7, Joshua chapter 1, verse 7, Only be thou strong and very courageous. And all of us, by, by nature, were weak. If Adam, weak. Eve, weak. That's why they fell for the lie of Satan. And since that time, as we are born into this world, we might be courageous in our chamber, in our room. When I get out there, I will say this, I will say this. When you eventually get there, you understand your weakness. I will stand. I'll stand firm. I'll not have a damaged backbone, but I will stand firm. He's like, when you come outside, you see how weak we are. I will never bend. They bring money, they bring whatever, and they send contact men to tell me to change and to go this wrong direction. No, that's what brings corruption in our country. I will stand. And then eventually in society, they see that, you know, you are vocal, you are bold, you are talking. And they say, this one is going to, you know, distract everybody from the way we want them to go. If people like this multiply in our country, this corruption, what we are eating, will not eat again. So part of what they are eating, they come to you and they say, um, the man higher than us. Uh, and everybody said, we should give you this puzzle. What's in this puzzle? A hundred million. Ah, I've never seen one million in my life. And these people, they bring a hundred million. And what's the purpose of sending a hundred million to you? They say that you stop making a noise. Noise? What does that mean? Uh -uh, you know now, you shout on the radio, you shout on television, they say you should stop. A hundred, they say, would you take it? They say, okay, let me take it and I'll pray later about it. Why don't you pray? Why don't you pray for us before you take it? We're not strong. We're not strong. We see money, it takes away our strength. We see man, great man, big man and comes to talk to us will change but now is the word that will strengthen you it will strengthen your mind it will strengthen your backbone because this is the bold inclusive book leading and empowering and so god told joshua he said only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right or to the left that thou mayest prosper. You will prosper whithersoever thou goest. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says this book of the law. Now, the whole book, the Bible, had not been completed at that time. Now it's complete. And we'll read it now. This book of the Lord, from the beginning to the end, shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then 
thou shalt have good success. Amen. 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 I see successful people before me. And it is that book that is bold. And it's an inclusive book that leads us to the power of the Lord. The Lord will do it in Jesus' name. It tells us in Romans chapter 15. And I'm reading here from verse 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were reaching for time, were reaching for our learning not just to leave the bible on the table on the desk not to leave it on the podium in the church it's there it's for preaching and then when we get there on sunday is when we open every day every time in every area of our lives in every compartment of our lives it is that book we read before breakfast the bible before supper, before sleep, the scripture that you have each inside you, it guides you, it motivates you, and it gets you to the place where you ought to be. Because whatsoever things we're reaching at four times, we're reaching for our learning that we, through the patience, the perseverance, the persistence, and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You'll have hope. And it's the Bible that gives us hope. You can go to you know, all those uh, books uh, we give out to you on mathematics, when we're teaching mathematics, and you go there, you're sorrowful, you're sad, you're disheartened, you are bereaved. Go to those smart books and open and open. There's no hope there. No hope there. Go to those textbooks that you read in school, even to university level, even the research papers that people are giving out. You are thinking about the future. What's there for me in the scripture? What's there for me when I die? Go to those books. It doesn't give any hope. What it gives is the methodology of walking, digging, digging the sand, making the blocks, and the building the house. No hope, but it's the Bible we have in our hands. That when you are sorrowful, when you are sad, when you are distressed, you go there, you find hope. I have hope. You know why people commit suicide? Hopeless, helpless. There's no hope. And they read all the books they can read on earth. And there's no hope. And they say there's no use. Why don't you read the Bible? It will take depression away. It will take anxiety away. It will take all the things that press you and oppress you. Take everything away when you have the Bible and the word of God. And you open and you read. It will give you hope. I have hope. Where's the hope? There in the Bible. You'll have hope. You'll not die another person's death. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three is the Bible boundless, instructor, bestowing, limitless experiences, boundless. Instructor, this is the word that instructs us and it gives us boundless blessings, experiences. In Romans chapter 5, we're reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 5, from verse 4. And patience, experience, and experience hope. In verse 5, in verse 5, it says, And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. In 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 3 it says according as his divine power has given unto us 
All things, look at that, all things. And many times we feel empty. Many times we feel we have nothing. Many times we feel we don't have what it takes to live the life we ought to live for the glory of God and for getting to heaven. And here it says, he has power. And by that power, divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, whereby are given unto us. How do I know what I have? How do I know what he has given? If I don't read the book. I read the story of a woman that, uh, you know, the husband had died and the husband willed to her thousands, thousands of dollars. And it was on a paper. And uh, the woman, after the husband left, she got that paper and uh, she said, this will be a good remembrance of my husband. And she framed it up and put it on the wall. She was dying in penury. She was dying in hunger until GHS. Pogion came to visit her because she was a member of uh, the tabernacle of uh, Spodion's church at that time. And when uh, Spodion visited her, she looked at the wall and saw something that is neatly uh, framed there and said, Madam, can I take this and look? And uh, he said, yes. And she, he took it and read and saw thousands of dollars already given to her by the husband. And it's on that, on that uh, paper. And said, uh, please, can I take it away for a few days? I want to study this. And the woman said, after all, he was, uh, you know, their pastor. And the Spurgeon took it to the bank and said, look at this. Can you interpret this for me? And he said, we've been looking for this uh, woman. She has all this given unto her to live a comfortable life for the rest of her life. But she framed it on the wall. And Spurgeon came to the woman and said, woman, you know what they said? This is livelihood this is money and it's yours completely yours but she did not know how many of us have all the inheritance the lord has given us by his power according to his power he has given us this everything pertaining to life and godliness and we frame it there i have a big bible i have a great bible why don't you read it and see all the riches of glory that god has prepared for you whereby a giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature partakers of the divine nature why 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 do i carry through life the nature of my earthly father militant man but you could be angry. And when he gets angry, a lot of things can be damaged. The nature of our father and the nature of our mother. You know, the mother, nice woman, nice woman. But when she feels this way to punish the husband, her nature knows what to do to punish and torment the husband and we carry about the nature of our father the nature of our mother the nature of the people in our tribe in our tribe they do not allow nothing to go for nothing anybody that does this no matter who that person is this is what we always do you insult me okay our tribe when you insult anybody in our tribe they will pay you back sooner or later. What do we carry? The nature of our tribes all around. And then I'm a Nigerian. I'm an African. And those people, they think they are wise. And we study their media, electronics, anything. And then we hack into it. We get the knowledge from them. And then we can hack into any account. What do we carry the nature 
of the nature that is falling when in our bible here the revelation is he gives us the divine nature he'll give you the divine nature i discovered that when somebody feels dirty and the clothes he's wearing are covered the dirt he wants to come out clean what does he do he removes the old garment he goes for a wash after going for the wash he doesn't take the dirty old garment anymore he takes the new garment if we're going to have the divine nature we have to get rid of the human nature the angry nature the covetous nature the tribal nature the warring nature the violent nature we have to discard that and now we put on the divine nature and our lives will be supernatural our lives will be wonderful because now he has given us the divine nature that for me having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. Three things we're looking at quickly. Number one, the Bible. Believing, instructive, beatitudes lived everywhere. Everywhere we go, we carry the Bible in our heart. And we behave like the instruction of the beatitudes everywhere we go. Number two, bearing imperishable beatitudes loyally every day. It's the Bible in our heart, in our mind, in our head, in our, on our tongue, in our personality that bears that imperishable life loyally every day and then number three building increasing beatitudes lovingly every time look at number one number one is believing instructive beatitudes lived everywhere matthew chapter five look at verse three in matthew chapter five verse three blessed are the poor in spirit not the proud in spirit, not the pompous in spirit. They know it all. You cannot talk to them. They have it all. You cannot give anything new to them. They've seen it all. You cannot show them anything. The proud, the pompous in spirit. But no, blessed are the poor in spirit. They are humble. They are receptive and they receive. It says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, blessed are they that mourn. They are not the people that make mockery of sin. Mockery of satanic nature. And when we say sin, S-I-N. Is Satan in nature. Nature. If Satan had not come to this world to impart his nature unto anyone, would have been living righteously. But Satan came, and now we have Satan in nature. And because of that, we have seen a lot of people, when they sin, when they do evil, you talk to them in a nice way. This is not right. This is not good. They laugh. It's the old, old man. It's the old school of thought. He doesn't know that time and the world has changed. He's still talking about Satan in nature. They make a mockery of that sin. They will not repent. They laugh. They giggle and they said, if you think that is sin, you have not seen anything yet. They do more. These are not the blessed people, but the blessed people are the people that mourn. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. The Lord will comfort you. 
Verse 5, in verse 5, blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek. Oh, they say, the days of being meek and humble and gentle and nice, all those days are gone. They say, now, we, the younger generation in the world, we will take the world by storm. Ah, there's no blessing there. And all those things you get, taking the world by storm, they'll never satisfy your inner man. That's why, after many of them have done these things, they just go to hang themselves. Satisfaction is not there. It's when you come, and you come with the poor in spirit, and you come mourning for the things wrong that you have done. And now you are meek, you are humble, you are gentle, blessed at the meek, for they shall tell me. Tell me, tell me. I used to think before I read the Bible that the fast runners and the people who are fast in grabbing this and grabbing that, I said, they're going to inherit the earth and will have nothing to inherit. The Lord says no. They will die before they inherit even a speck of the sand of the earth. But the people who are meek, the people who are lowly, the people who are following after him, and they follow with all their heart. They have a new nature. They have a regenerated nature. And they are following after the one that said, Take my yoke upon you, for I am meek and I am lowly. And ye shall find rest to your soul. We are the people that will inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Look at Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Matthew 11, verse 29. It says, Take my yoke upon you. Do you have any yoke of Christ on you that guides you, that leads you, that controls your talk, the talk of your mouth? That controls the direction of your life. Or are you a person who just rises up, whatever it costs to you, you just do. What is the you? What is the controlling factor of the presence of the Lord in your life? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Look at number two here. Number two, bearing imperishable beatitudes loyally every day. Bearing it like fruit. Giving it out. Relating with people with those beatitudes. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. In verse 6 it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled say amen. amen the average person church man or no church man the average person preacher pastor or the people on the pew we hunger after the things of this life we hunger after money, we hunger. After material things, we hunger. After materialism, we have left the beatitudes of Christ behind. But blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, after holiness, for they shall be filled. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful. Christ's life was filled with mercy. The woman came from Syrophoenicia, have mercy on me, son of David. The beggar sat by the wayside, have mercy on me, son of David. And then we are told peace and mercy. You know, the peace of peace and mercy, peace and mercy, peace and mercy. And yet, the people who follow 
the mercy for Christ. No mercy. I'll pay them back in their coin. I tried to tell him, obey me. I will say, sir, God is the first Lord, the first authority. And we're obeying him. Ah, you obey God, you don't obey me. No mercy. Have mercy now. Give us chance. Give us freedom to obey our God. You cannot take us to heaven. You cannot close the door of hell that we don't go there. Only the God of heaven and we seek his mercy. Give us chance so that we have the mercy of the Lord. I pray the mercy of the Lord will not elude you in Jesus' name. And then after you've got the mercy of the Lord, show mercy. In the language of your mouth, show mercy. In the action of your life, show mercy. Because blessed are the merciful. For they shall, tell me, obtain mercy. How do you deal with your wife? You order here and there as if you're in the barracks. Sir, show mercy now. How do you deal with your husband? Your bite? And you do whatever. Show mercy now. How do you deal with your children? Mercy. How do you deal with your neighbors? Show mercy. A person who says, I'm a Christian, it means you have Christ on the inside. He has mercy and compassion. In everything you do, everywhere you go, let there be mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for you will obtain mercy. I said you will obtain mercy. You know, being merciful, you are going to start being aggressive. Walking about, moving about, living in anger, beating down this, beating down that. You can easily tell us, give me way I want to pass. You don't have to push us. You can tell us, what do you want? We're willing to help and to give. Instead of asking, can I pass? Can you make a way for me? I'm trying to get your attention. Can you do? They don't ask us any question. They just beat us down. That's not the way of the one who is living by the Beatitudes. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart. Pornography defiles our heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. All those dirty stories in the barber's shop. You get to the barber's shop, and while the barber is trying to, you know, cut your ear, he's telling some dirty, dirty stories. And you just stay there, and all those dirty things are entering into your heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. You go to weave your ear, uh, weave, you know, sisters. And the fellow, while he's born in that, I'm born in that, is telling all these jokes that are offline. Blessed are the pure in heart. We we'll see it at night to a grandma, and uh, you know, grandma is telling story, story, story. And these stories, they do not edify the heart. And we just sit down there and we don't respectfully tell grandma, grandma, uh, these stories will not help the young hearts. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I pray we'll see God on the final day in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. It says, follow peace with all men. When you get back to work, remember that. Follow peace with all men. Administrator, manager, foreman leader you know we, we shouldn't forget we're there briefly we're going to a place that will never end therefore we don't allow that brief time we'll spend in the office in the company to take heaven away from us for the peace with all men 
and tell me out aloud. You know, sometimes uh, some people try to make us afraid of mentioned holiness. They say, now, this is a general assembly, so please reserve holiness for your little group where you minister every time. Holiness is for those who want to see God. Who wants to see God here on the final day? Amen. Yeah. You will see God. Yeah. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And here it says, follow peace and holiness without which no man, no apostle, no bishop, no pastor, no preacher, no founder of any church, any denomination will see God without holiness. Holiness in the heart, holiness at home, holiness in the private. When you are there as a woman and you are with a man and there is no other person there with you. When you are there as a man with a woman with no other person there and God is keeping a record but Shasha did not know that God was keeping a record he thought he was you know whatever he did in the private in the public in the palace he thought I am in authority I can do anything until the hand came take him you know the story you are wage and you are found wanting on that day he left the earth but he did not read or know the bible the blessed instruction before leaving earth he went to a lost eternity and here we are follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord you will see the lord i will see the lord you will see the Lord in Jesus' name. Everywhere you have not been at peace with people, at peace with your wife, go back home and say, even if you thought you were right and she was wrong, I am sorry. She's never had that from you before. She too will say, oh, my husband, I have my faults too. I am sorry. Make peace. Make peace. Make peace. And then holiness everywhere you go. Be conscious that the rapture can take place anytime. And this fighting, fighting, angry, angry attitude, disposition. Get rid of that and follow holiness everywhere, every time. So that you will see the Lord on the final day in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at number three here. Number three, we're looking at building, increasing beatitudes, then lovingly and everywhere. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5 and we're reading from verse 10. Matthew chapter 5 we're reading from verse 10 it says blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. You need to understand you by the grace of God you are saved and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and because now you have the righteousness imputed and imparted into your life there are people that think you're strange because you don't run after the things they run after you're strange and they persecute you now if the persecution does not take the righteousness away from you and you remain not righteous you are insulted you remain righteous you are assaulted you remain righteous you are punished you remain righteous you are dribbled here and there you remain righteous those are the people that will have 
the blessing. But if while you're persecuted, you say, ah, what's the matter? I know who I am. I know my position in society. This one, were it not for Christianity, would not be able to, you know, address me like this. And then you throw away the robe of righteousness and you put on the other robe. Now come, I'll tell you, I can be as wicked as you are. And you bring out the wicked nature that we are dropped and we are buried. Now you are no more righteous if Christ comes and meets you in that condition. You are not saying, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. And for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's those who remain righteous in spite of the persecution, in spite of the pressure, in spite of the misrepresentation, you remain righteous. You do not allow the actions of people around you to take the righteousness away from you. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, it says, let your light so shine. Amen. Amen. Let your light so shine. You know, in the in the olden days, maybe in some places even now, they have a lamp, they have oil inside. And then they light it up. As long as the oil is there, the light will keep on shining. And then they put that uh, light shining. They put it in a conspicuous place to give light to everyone in the house. It's as long as we remain the wise virgin. We have our lamps and we have oil inside that's the anointing. And then the light is shining until the glorious day. But the foolish virgins, all the things of life, dry up the anointing, dry up the oil, and they have the lamb, they have the profession, they have the name of their church, they have the denomination, they have the title, the lamp is there, but the oil is run out. No more oil, no more anointing. And they're not living in a way to show that the oil is there and the lamp is burning. And then Christ comes and the announcement is made, lo, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go out and meet him. But now they turn on the light for these five foolish virgins, foolish religious people, having profession, having lamb, having Christian name, having Christian title, I mean, Christian ministry, but anger has taken over their lives. Covetousness has taken over their lives. And it cannot shine bright in the righteousness of the Lord. Jesus himself said, those foolish virgins will not get into the kingdom. The wise will go in and the door will be shut. And the people who didn't have the right oil, they went out to buy, you understand? There are different kinds of oil, this grade, that grade, but the inferior one. Anywhere they could get something that is similar to oil they got, they came back and they were knocking at the door. Open to us, open to us. And the Lord from the inside said, who are you? Oh, we've been waiting for you. I never knew you. You are not ready. I pray we will be ready. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Your good works. If I'm born again, my wife should see and tell. This man is different from who I knew before. My sister, if you are born again, your husband, the closest person to you should know. Let your light so shine before me. It will shine at home to your husband. Not just that you carry Bible, not just that you speak in tongues. He would see from your life 
And if you're born again, your employer will know. Your foreman will know. The people who work with you will know. Your students will know if you're a born again teacher. The members of the church will know if the bishop is born again. If the archdeacon is born again. If the lay reader is born again. If the preacher is born again because they will see his attitude is different his language is different his ministration is different his interaction is different his demand for money is different now we know his light is shining before us my light will shine and everywhere you go before you open your mouth they even want to listen to you because the oil is there the anointing is there the life is there the beatitudes are there let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven good good amen if my work does not glorify the Father which is in heaven, I labor in vain. If your work does not glorify a Father who is in heaven, when people see you, your life, your standing, your action, your attitude, and the only thing they can think about is God will praise you for doing this through this man it's only when your works or your life glorify god who is in heaven that the anointing is really working anointing will work in your life the bible will be transferred into your life the light in the bible will shine forth to everyone you confront in jesus name Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let the Lord himself walk in your heart, walk in your life, so that the kingdom will be reflected in your life.